service of the church. Enjoy our service today! Good morning. Welcome to worship on this uh, beautiful Sunday morning. Today we celebrate All Saints Sunday. Um, we want to welcome those who are worshiping with us through the television broadcast. Uh, this is possible because of your donations and the donations of this congregation. So it's a nice way to reach out to all uh, those who are not able to get out and worship on Sunday morning. Why don't we stand as we begin our worship? Begin, we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In you we live and move and have our being. Almighty God, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to God forever and ever. Amen. There, there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages. We praise you for the promise of eternal life given to the great cloud of witnesses who have gone before us through your Son, Jesus Christ, and all who believe in him. This is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one holy church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant to us the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, that he may inspire us trust and believe in him. Encourage us through the commitment of the saints that one day and all the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, the Harvest Bazaar just took place, but I think we have a recap video of all the things that took place. Remembrance of all those funerals that we have done this last year. There were seven funerals that we had from this congregation, and all the rest are um, people that weren't members, but they, they wanted to be a part of and, and included. So we will remember those people at this time. Doris Ball. Janice Barr. Merlin Bass. Joseph Ballou, Bruce Belke, Phyllis Bethke, Joanne Bourne, 
John Edgar Bourne. Irene Brown. Keith Christensen. Roger Klaus. Stephen Michael Danes. Raven Ellen. Sharon Galusha. Janet Hoff. Joyce K. Jensen. Gilbert Liddell. Marie Lenhart. Donald Litchfield. Ronald Mobby. Eugene Miles. Velma Miller. Orgel Morley. Delos Nelson. Clayton Nybauer. David Persons. Deborah Pickering. Rose Powell. Richard Ross. Geraldine Schroff. Patty Stuffer. Dale Staves. Nancy Stelter. Michael Welter. Blessed be their memory. The first reading today is from Revelations chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessings and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might, be to God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more, thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Second reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the, the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we'll, we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and then he began to speak. And he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they they persecuted the prophets who were before them. Gospel of the Lord. I'm going to call upon Bishop uh, Murari to come on up. So good to share the pulpit with you. We we continue to keep it, uh, you in our prayers and all of your parishes. Thank you so, so thank much. You. Sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It is always a joy to be here in this house. I believe that um, God is doing something great that our natural understanding will not be able to phantom. God is bringing men and women from all over all nations to the knowledge of Christ. And so I'm I'm so glad to be part of what God is doing in such a time as this. So Pastor, I want to say thank you so much for the opportunity. It is a great privilege and I count it a great joy to stand before this pulpit and before God's people. Our country, Nigeria, is really going through a turbulent time, and um, we have our current president is a Muslim, and is trying to Islamize the nation. As I'm speaking right now, there are a lot of uh, secret genocides going on in villages. Um, he tried to impose a law. Uh, making sure that uh, the nomad people, the men that move from place to places with their cattle, are protected with a right, and they call it grazing right. It simply means that uh, when they come to your land, and if they like the land, they dispossess you of the land, and the land becomes theirs. And if you try to resist, they kill you. Now, in my country, we don't have rights to carrying weapon. But these nomad people, the Muslim, they have right to carry guns. Criminals have right to carry guns. So they can kill, they can maim, they go to villages, they can wipe the entire villages out. And so our outreaches are more in the villages. Some of the time, if we have to go to some of these villages, we have to hire Uh, special ops police officers to protect us with their AK-47. That is how dangerous it is. But I so much give thanks to the Almighty God that says that when we are being persecuted, there is a great reward ahead of us. And so no matter what they do, the joy that we have is that the more they attack, the more we plant churches. The more they oppose, the more we reach out with the love of Jesus. And we see hundreds of uh, sinners in the villages and other places among the Muslims being converted also. And so it is a joy that we are able to tell the gospel to these unrich people. We plant churches, we take food and uh, Medicare and clothing to the rural area every Christmas season. We call it Operation Christmas Blessing. Last year, December, we took food and clothes to some villages. We were able to minister to about 600 people 
And at the end of the meeting, we have 57 converts that gave their heart to Jesus Christ. And the chief of the village gave his heart to Jesus also. So it's a great thing that you have been praying for us. Last year when I came, the church took up an offering, and we are able to do all this because of your prayers and your support. I want to say on behalf of our people in Nigeria, my family, and the Church of Jesus, we want to say thank you for your continuous prayer and support. May God Almighty bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I want to share with you briefly, I hope, <laughs> a message that the Lord laid in my heart to share with us. Um, I want us to look at Matthew chapter number 5, verse 6. Matthew sh chapter 5. The gospel we just read this morning. The Bible said in verse 6. Oh, sorry, this is Mark. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. When I read this scripture, I could feel the heart of the Father saying, it is a great thing to hunger after spiritual things. The church cannot remain where it is. There is much more that God has prepared for us. The Bible said also in John chapter 10, verse 10, the life that God has given to us, the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy it. But Jesus said, I came to give you life and to give you this life in abundance. What does that mean? It means that he gave us life, our salvation. But more than our salvation, there is more. We need to trust God for more of him. We need to believe for more of him. Just because we are saved is not everything. Just because we come to church is not everything. There is much more. God said, there must be a deep hunger in our heart to long for more of him in our lives. We cannot fill our life and be satisfied just with material things. There must be a spiritual desire to know more of God, to go after God, to serve God with all of our lives. Jesus said that I came to give life. That is salvation. But beyond salvation, there is more. We need to walk our walk in relationship with him. We need to know him. We need to desire the things that he has given in the Bible. The blessings that he has poured upon our lives. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. There is a blessing that comes upon us as believers when there is hunger in our heart. Daily we hunger for food. This morning when I woke up, I went to my host. I said, I need coffee. <laughs> and unfortunately, I couldn't get the coffee because there was no cream. And so all the way as we're driving, I was thinking about the coffee. My God, as soon as we finish service, I'm going for my coffee. That is a hunger. I desire it. I wish that believers will hunger after God same way. They will begin to crave after him. 
I tell the church in America, God is giving us the second chance. Our nation has turned our back on God for too long. And God is bringing back the church to the original purpose. In this generation, we are going to see more of the power of God. We are going to see more hunger in the street. There are people out there that need to hear the gospel. We need to desire in our heart to take the gospel to the unrich people in our street. Joe said, it shall come to pass in the last day, I will pour out. I'm not going to trickle it out or drop it. I'm going to pour out. What does that mean? It means that in the last day, we are going to see more of God's move, his power, his presence, his glory, his love is going to be released upon the church. When I say the church, it's not upon the four wall. It's talking about me and you. Are we hungry for God? Do we want God's hand in our city? God will not move in our city if we don't desire it, if we don't pray for it, if we don't look forward to it, if we do not crave for it. Jesus said, pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come as it is in heaven. The church need to establish the government and the rulership of heaven upon planet earth. In our community, in our schools, in our job, in our home, in our family, we need to bring the presence and the glory and the love of Jesus. This is not a time to sit back in defense again. This is the time to take the gospel and advance with it. Somebody in the mall need to hear of Jesus. Church, it is time for us to hunger for more of God. His move, his power, his salvation upon men. Many of us are seated here. Our grandkids need to know Jesus. Some of us, our relations need to know Jesus. It is time for us to rise to see this gospel of Jesus need to be taken to the less privileged, to those who doesn't know, on our knees in prayer and in our heart as we share it with other people. Blessed are those who hunger. Are you hungry? Do you need more of him? God bless you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Just as our Savior gave us a meal, he taught us a prayer. So let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we give those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. 
And we pray that in your mercy, you would strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord.